today we are installing a 3D printed steering gearbox in our tugboat build. Now this is something I downloaded off of Thingversus. If you're in the 3D printing space, you're familiar with that. So you're able to print these yourself. Uh, these are printed out of ASA and they are a high strength material and we are going to be digging into this today. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I have an idea of how this is supposed to be installed. So I'm gonna to try to do this as efficiently and as quickly as possible, but I wanna make sure I leave enough detail so that if you're trying to do this on your own tugboat, you know exactly what you can expect and some things you may run into along the way. So without further ado, let's rip the steering wheel off. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop off this cap. It just pulls off, I believe. We don't need to reuse it, but I wouldn't mind not destroying it. There we go, pulled that off. What's left here is a cotter pin and a mega washer that holds this guy on here. There's that. Okay, now the plan, as I know it. Let me pop this out. Okay, the plan as I know it is going to be to cut this out and replace it with this. We're gonna do it slowly because I obviously don't wanna cut out too much. That would be no bueno. It's gonna be a lot harder to put it back in there than it is to take it out. Now this feels a little bit big. Um, so this may be a, a, what we're gonna run into. Let's cut this whole lip off here first and then uh, we'll address how big we can get this in there and how it may uh, fit in there. Okay, my weapon of choice is going to be an oscillating cutter. I like using these because it's pretty good with the plastic. It doesn't really melt it, sling a bunch of stuff everywhere. So let's get after it. Okay, there's the first part of that. Now we can address how this may or may not work. It looks like it's going to work, but there's more cutting that needs to be done. We're gonna go ahead and slightly cut around this rim here. We're gonna sneak up on it. For our next trick, we are going to be using a jigsaw. I don't use jigsaw very often. I hate working with wood. And uh, this is about as close as to woodworking as I wanna get by using a jigsaw. What we're going to do is just lightly cut around this perimeter in like a full circle, right? Like I said, I'm gonna sneak up on it. I don't wanna to remove too much material and then have a new problem. So we're gonna let this, cut this lip out essentially, gonna make this profile out, get rid of this guy, and see how we do. Okay. More holes. Oh, okay, we've got something to work with now. So the plan from here is we're going to use some rib nets. And it's really important not to over tighten the rib nets. I've done that on one of these holes and it pulls right through. So we got to be a little bit sneaky with that. I can lose these earplugs. Oh, that's better. And so the plan, we're going to put our big bolt back in here. This is a three quarter by five inch bolt and it fits right into the back of the part here. Just kind of give it a lot like tap on the back. Hang on and it will set in there. Now, I should have talked about these before, but kind of a materials list. So we've got our three quarter bolt with a nylock nut, kind of break in that nylock. I ran it up and down with my impact. I applied a little heat to it. You know, that nylock, I'm not, if it's just strictly as it comes, it's a lot of torque on this to tighten that down and we don't need any more than that. So I just kind of broke it in We've got some socket cap screws that I got from uh, Atwoods for a small fortune. They're like a dollar a bolt for a quarter 20, one inch socket head screw. It hurt my soul to buy them, but uh, they had exactly what I needed. So I went ahead with it. That's what a dollar bolt looks like. This giant one was 29 cents. So a little frustrated there, but we can afford it. It's okay. So our next step, it's going to be to line this joker up, mark our holes, drill holes for our rib nuts, and then uh, pop them in there and let's go. Okay, so we just went and grabbed our rib nuts. If you've not used these before, 
These are quarter 20 rivnets. Now I've had the pleasure of installing many of these throughout my days of building Jeeps. And um, you, you'll learn a couple things. One is when you have to put multiple rivnets in, definitely make sure you're just drilling one hole at a time, let everything find home, take it in and out each time you do it and your life will be a lot easier. They do not take a lot of torque to break them free and when they break free, there's no access to the back of this in your screw. And you're gonna have to drill a hole here, get some pliers, it's not gonna be fun. So we are going to sneak up on it. This is a 2364 drill bit. Make sure that that lines up with whatever spec rib nuts you got. I don't know that that's standard. I've marked my first hole. We're gonna drill it. We're gonna set the rib nut, assemble it with the one bolt, mark our next hole, take it out, mark our next hole, and we're gonna do this over and over again. So it's gonna take a minute. Okay, so we got that hole drilled. Do not waller it out or anything. Um, drill it as minimal material removal as you have to. You want that rib nut to fit in nice and tight. It's a little tight on the back side of this radii. We're gonna set it and hopefully it works. You don't have to have a fancy rib nut tool. I do recommend it. The problem with this is, is this thing's a monster, right? It's huge. It's for some big boy stuff and that's not what we're doing. So we're gonna get it in there and we're gonna compress it like that, just a little bit. Because if you overdo it, you'll basically start to punch out the material that you're trying to hold on to because you're over compressing it and you're gonna poke it back out again. That's no bueno. So that said, let's get our dollar bolts out. Quarter 20 by one socket cap screw. This guy right here, and it is a quarter 20 by one. Make sure it threads in there just fine. We'll find an alley key that does fit. 3 16 so let's start with this. Like I said, this is gonna be painful because I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it in and out every single time because that is the best way to do rib nuts. You wanna make sure that they are perfectly lined up. And by doing one at a time, you ensure that by the time you get to here, it's not off. And um, that's how we're gonna do it. And you wanna make sure you get as dead center of the hole as much as you can. Uh, yeah, I would say it did. So you can see our spot there. Again, just let it eat. That's it. You don't want to do any more than that. Make sure the rib nut fits. It's good. Put it in the tool. There you go. Just as it starts to get easier, you start to yield it. Okay, back off again. Okay, we're done with this. One more dollar bolt right there. Okay, things get easier from here. Okay, I grabbed my grease. This is Marine Grease 24C. This is essentially what you use on a propeller shaft of a Mercury. And uh, I don't wanna go crazy with it because when it gets hot, I don't really want it like seeping down and oozing everywhere. So just a real light coat on all of our surfaces up here is going to be the plan and it will kind of walk itself around okay now let's do our gears we're gonna, like i said we're going to do the back side of the gears because they will basically rub on this backing plate oh, that's slimy there you go let that work in there it is pretty smooth actually okay go back on with our wheel we're getting there, maybe, there we go. Okay, so we've got this snugged up just for now because there's gonna be a part two. So make sure you like the video here, subscribe to the channel so you see the follow-up. Let me go ahead and show you the, uh, the backside here so you can see what's going on. So here is the backside. You can see our little sun gear there and how it's working. So this is a pretty tight clearance. Hopefully you can see it there. So there's a little socket head, socket cap screw that goes in there that should clear for a push-pull cable. And that said, like and subscribe again, please, so you can follow along with our build. And we'll see you on the next one for part two.